when you begin your entrepreneurial journey to buy business, you may begin by asking yourself the question, what type of business should I buy? Unless, of course, you already know the type of business you plan on buying. If you already own a business, your decision is far easier, as you either look for a similar business to the one you already have, or you look to buy a business that complements the one you own. But if you don't already have a business, you are effectively starting with a clean slate. So if you're not too sure about the type of business you want to buy, it might help you to know that when I decided to buy a business for myself, I was in the same boat as you. I didn't have a clue about the type of business I wanted to buy. And at the beginning of my journey to buy a business, I had also limited myself to the size of business I thought I could afford to buy, as initially I hadn't fully appreciated the concept of using other people's money to buy a business at that stage. But once I understood how I could use other people's money to buy a business, including borrowing from the seller, or as it's known, seller financing or vendor financing, this opened up my opportunities massively. And whilst I still wasn't sure about the type of business I wanted to buy, what I did know was how I could buy a much larger million dollar business rather than a small one with small profits. If you are open to the idea of using other people's money and to the idea of being agnostic about the type of business you buy, you'll soon discover that there are all sorts of businesses available to buy that make and sell all sorts of things and provide all different services. It's because of this very concept that made me think about creating this video, which came about as a result of sitting on a plane and watching one of those vehicles that push back the aircraft from the gate. It was by watching this vehicle that made me wonder who makes them. The type of vehicles I'm talking about are very low to the ground and have very large wheels that are almost disproportionate to the vehicle's size, which means they are very specific to the function they perform. But there will be a business or businesses out there that makes these machines. I'm sure the key components used to manufacture these vehicles, like the engine, the gearbox, the wheels and so on, are ordered in from yet more businesses out there to buy. But the chassis of the vehicle will likely be the key design feature of the brand and something that this type of business manufactures themselves. And then they will attach all the various pre-made components to the chassis. Why am I telling you this? Well, it's to open your mind up to the opportunities that exist. But whilst making your decision about the type of business you buy, always keep in mind the demand for the products or services each business you look at sells. For example, the type of business that manufactures the airport vehicles I've just described, they will likely always have demand for their machines, so long as traveling by aircraft continues and the aircraft continue to be made such that they always need to be pushed back from the airport gates. I recall that soon after having bought my business, I met many different business owners who owned all sorts of business types, which really opened my mind to what's out there and the many opportunities for would-be entrepreneurs and would-be business owners to own one of these businesses when the owners retire or sell for other reasons. The business I purchased was in Bournemouth, in the south of England. I say was because I sold it a few years back. This particular business traded from an industrial estate, which by its very nature had many other businesses trading alongside it, all of which did what those businesses do. And if you're prepared to put in the graft, this is where the opportunity lies for you. This is because it's far better to approach business owners directly than it is to use a business broker. Not that business brokers don't have their place, because they do, but if you approach business owners directly, you are more likely to find some of the best opportunities. Where the opportunities lie is from the fact that many business owners are very reluctant to put their business for sale on the open market, which is not because they don't want to sell a business, but because they are worried about their employees finding out before they need to know, or that their competitors will find out and then exploit the situation, and or their customers may get to know and they may begin to worry about what could happen to the business 
once it's under new ownership in the future. It's for this very reason why I recommend networking as much as possible when you start looking to find the right business to buy for you. And by approaching business owners directly and by building a relationship with business owners, you are more likely to be the person they want to sell to. Also, think about it this way. If you approach an owner who isn't necessarily looking to sell at the time you meet them, but then something happens soon thereafter, like for example a serious illness develops, who are they likely to contact first? Probably you. If you've already made contact and if you've already spent the time building rapport with the owner, it's more than likely you could be the first person they call. As you think about this approach to buying a business, bear in mind that it's not always about the money when entrepreneurs sell their business. I can certainly vouch for that. Having sold two businesses I owned outright and another one in which I owned a third share too. The first business I sold, I wanted to make sure the new owner would look after my employees and my customers in the same way that I did. This is the business I sold with Seller Finance, which is what opened my mind to how Seller Finance works. The second business I sold, I sold it because I'd gone through cancer at the same time as the business had gone through turmoil, and I just wanted out. You could say I was burnt out, and it really wasn't about the money in this case. I'd just survived cancer where I'd been given months to live. That was back in 2014. So I obviously survived thanks to Bournemouth Hospital and their oncology department. The third business where I sold my third share in an elderly care business was because I wanted to get away from the infighting between my two business partners. They were brothers and a complete nightmare to work alongside. It's hard enough running a business, dealing with employee problems and customer challenges without also having to be the go-between with infighting between two brothers, where one was threatening to kill the other. So I wanted out, and this is the time when I decided to buy another business. The debate you need to have with yourself when it comes to finding or choosing a business to buy is whether you buy a business you know everything about, something about, or next to nothing about. So I've owned businesses in each of those categories, one was an accountancy practice which aligned to my trade, which is because I'm a chartered accountant and chartered tax advisor. Although I didn't buy this particular business, but instead I started it from scratch. The one with the fighting brothers was an elderly care business. And whilst I couldn't say I knew a lot about this business or sector in which it operated, the company was one of my former clients. And when I sold my practice, one of the brothers approached me to invest. During my time advising them as their accountant and tax advisor, as well as helping them develop their business, I got to know a fair amount about elderly care. So I knew something about this sector. The business I bought after the care business, although actually I bought it when I still own the care business, was the one that I knew nothing about at all. The business I bought designed, manufactured and fitted furniture. I knew nothing about any of this and I'd never owned a business that operated a factory either, which is what this had. I think for me and the way I approach running a business is that all businesses have many things in common. All businesses have employees with various HR challenges. They all have customers with varying degrees of customer service too. On top of that, all businesses have systems that run behind the business like the account system, the system that deals with customer flow, the stock control system, if it has stock or inventory, and so on. But the other important thing to highlight is that if you buy a big enough business at the outset, do you need to understand what the business sells or how it works in detail? If it has the employees who know and understand the business, who deal with the customers, who know and understand the systems, and so on. What I would say is you should at least start out with the intention of buying a business you know something about, rather than buying one you know nothing about, but keep an open mind. The reason I say that is because if you are specific about the business you want to buy, it's probably going to take a lot longer to buy a business, unless you are happy to relocate for the right business. 
being very specific will limit your options unless of course it's a very common type of business like a hairdresser, a restaurant or a retail store. But then are these the types of business you should or want to buy in the first place? I deal with the risks of each of these businesses in other videos, but suffice to say, restaurant businesses are very high risk. Hairdresser businesses rely heavily on the relationship between the hairdresser and the customers, and if the hairdresser leaves, oftentimes the customers leave with them. There's nothing wrong in being specific, but be aware your business buying journey may take longer as it may take more time to find a business for sale in the specific sector. Although, on the other hand, if you are prepared to relocate, your chances of success of finding a business will improve. When I bought the fitted furniture business, I found it in a totally different location to where I lived, which is about 140 miles from where the care business was located. So where there's a will, there's a way. What may help you in your entrepreneurial journey is if you spend time and write your CV, which is not for it to be shown to anyone, least of all the seller of any businesses you look at to buy, but for you to review what skills and business experience you have. This will help you to think about the types of businesses you may know something about, which may mean you can widen your search to more business types. I hope that helps you on your journey to find a business to buy. And if you have any questions on this topic about buying a business or in any other aspect about the process involved in buying a business, please drop a comment below. And always remember that no question is a stupid question. If you don't know it, you don't know it. And by having the answer to a question you have might be all it takes to move you to the very next step in your journey to buy a business. Take care and I look forward to seeing you on my next video.